As you may be aware, Google Ads is currently in the process of updating its dashboard. All of the information is still there, but it's just in different locations. Because of that reason, we've had a lot of requests for us to be able to give an updated version of how you can start your very own Google Ads campaign with the new Google Ads dashboard. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. But before we get into that step-by-step -step process of how you need to go about setting up your very own Google Ads campaign, I did wanna show you the structure that you need to be using for your Google Ads search campaigns. And I just wanna break down the best way for you to be able to set up your campaigns, your ad groups, your keywords, and also your landing pages. And the reason for why this is so important, because if you don't have the correct structure, regardless if you've set up your campaign in the correct way, you're not gonna be getting those results that you need for your Google Ads campaign, and more importantly, for your business. So when it comes to setting up your Google Ads search campaign, this is the structure that you should be having. So we firstly have our overall Google Ads account, and then we have our different campaigns that we can have in that one Google Ads account. Now, the way that you need to set this up is that each Google Ads account should only be for one individual business, and then you can have your individual different campaigns. Now, for some businesses, you may only need one campaign, and there is no problems with that at all. The reason for why you would have different campaigns is mainly for two core reasons. One is that you wanna separate your budget spending by different locations. So let's just say that you're targeting the same product, but you wanna be able to control how much you spend in the state of New York versus the state of California. That's one reason for why you would set up a separate campaign. Another reason for why you'd set a separate campaign is if you've got some really different products or services. Say for example, if you're running a hotel business and you wanna be having one campaign for your one bedroom villas and another campaign for your two bedroom villas, once again, you wanna control that budget. That's why you would have separate campaigns. And then underneath each of those campaigns is what we call ad groups and your ad groups are a collection of keywords which are all in the same keyword theme. So if for example in this one you had your campaign and you wanted to run your one bedroom villas and then you also wanted to have your one bedroom apartments you would have these in your separate ad groups but they would sit underneath your same campaign. Then you would have your keywords underneath each of those ad groups and then they would go to your specific landing pages. And what you're wanting to achieve here you wanted to have a straightforward process from someone searching so that you've got specific ad groups with specific keywords and the reason for why you would break them into separate ad groups is so that these keywords can be related to your individual ads and then going through to your targeted landing pages. So that's an overview of how you need to go about setting up and structuring your Google Ads search campaigns, making sure that you've got those very clear campaigns with ad groups that only have one individual keyword theme so that you can then create targeted ad copy, which is sending people through to targeted landing pages. So what we wanna do right now is now that you've got an idea of how to structure your campaign, I wanna now take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up your very own Google Ads search campaign. Now, if you do miss any of these steps, I don't want you to stress at all because if you follow that link in the description below, you're gonna get access to my Google Ads search campaign setup guide. And this is a step-by-step -step guide which includes all of the screenshots so that you don't miss any of those steps and you can set up your Google Ads search campaign the right way. So let's jump into an extended screen share so that I can now show you the step-by-step -step process so that you can get started with Google Ads in 2023. Let's go. So when you're in Google Ads, you've got two new options in this new dashboard. You can either go to and press this create button, which will take you through to whether you wanna create a new campaign ad group, do some new keywords or a new conversion action, or you can just go straight to this new campaign function. So let's just click on new campaign. And this will take you through to your option of choosing your own campaign objective. Now there will be some people who will say that you need to set up a campaign without a goals guidance. However, I disagree with that. And the reason for that is because you wanna be choosing either sales or leads if you're wanting to drive some conversions. If you're an e-commerce brand or you've got a specific dollar value on your product or service, you would choose sales and that's where people can complete their sales online. Or if you're a service-based industry and you're wanting to generate some more inquiries or leads for your business, you would choose leads. And the benefit of choosing one of these two is that you're gonna be able 
well to then leverage off some of the data that Google has for your business niche. So let's go through and click leads. Now in this account, we've already got some conversion action set up. If you don't have these set up, you don't need to worry. You can go through and set this up at a later date, but we're just gonna go through and click continue. And we're gonna be selecting a search campaign. So you click on search. And then from there, you can go through and call this a campaign name. Now, when it comes to the campaign name, you're the only one who is gonna be seeing this. So this is an external, but what I do recommend is I recommend that you call this a campaign that makes sense. For this example, we're gonna be marketing our one bedroom villas. So what we would do is that we would go through and call it one bedroom villas. And that's because when we go through and we've got multiple campaigns, we can actually know very clearly what this one is about. Then we go through and click continue. Because this is an existing account, it's giving us a recommend of setting up some conversions, but because this is mainly for people who are new to Google Ads, I recommend starting with clicks. The reason for that is because we wanna first be getting as much traffic as possible so that we can then review the data and then we can switch it over to a maximized conversions bidding strategy. Now, you do have some options here if you wanted to optimize your campaign for acquiring new customers. What this does is, as you can see from here, is that your campaign bids equally for new and existing customers. So if you were to select this in here, what that is now doing is that it is now putting some extra value on people who have never been to your website before. And even if you wanted to, you can actually even say that you only wanna bid for new customers. Now you do have to go through and follow this list where you go through and define your audience. So if we were to select that option, we would then select the audiences which we don't wanna target, whether that would be website visitors or some of our previous converters. Now this is only gonna be for people who have an existing Google Ads, Ads account. If you're new to Google Ads, you would just go through and you'd be happy to target new and old customers because we're just wanting to see what converts in Google Ads. Then we go through and click next. Now you do have some options right here where you can add your ads to the Google search partners. I always unselect this. The reason why I unselect that is that Google has the vast majority of the search. In some countries, it's up to 97%. So I just don't see the benefit in targeting those extra sites, especially because I find that you don't get any extra data and you don't get the same level of data on those extra sites as what you do in Google. Now also too, when it comes to the display network, these are those image-based ads. And the reason for why I unselect that one is because Google will just create text ads in the display network. If you wanna have ads in your display network, you're better off setting up a separate image-based campaign with highly defined images for that purpose. Now, when it comes to locations, you can select the country. We're based in Australia. It gives that that by default, but if you wanted to add in other locations and we're gonna type in Australia, we're also gonna target Singapore and let's also put in India. And the reason for that is because once again, this is for a villa resort in Bali and they're three of the main countries that travel to Bali. Now, you don't have to target by country. You can also target by state, city, and also post or zip code. Now, when it comes to the location options, you've got two options here. These either presence, which is people who are in your location, or interest, which is people who aren't in your location, but they searching about or wanting to find out information about a product or service in your area. For this one, we're gonna choose presence only. And the reason for that is because a lot of people would have interest in Bali, but we're just wanting to target those specific countries. If you're a local service provider, say for example, a plumber or electrician, I would also recommend the presence option. The reason for that is because you only want to target people who are currently living in your area. Now, when it comes to languages, you do need to remember that Google doesn't automatically translate your ad copy. So if you want to have a campaign that's targeting in English and you want a campaign in another language, you would set that up as a separate campaign. Now, when it comes to audiences, I'm a big believer in adding in as many audiences as possible. Now, there's two options for your audiences. There's a targeting option. This is a new campaign. I would not recommend that. And that's when you're targeting only specific audiences. Or this is the observation method. And this is just that you're just getting data and it's just you requesting extra data from Google. Now, this is an important step because once that extra data, you can then make extra optimizations. So we're going to type in Bali here and you can see there's all of the different audiences in here. Let's also type in beach holidays. Now, I would recommend starting with about 20 different audiences. I'm just going to select a couple in here. But as I said, I'd be recommending that you're selecting at least 20 different audiences. We've just got about five selected there. And let's just go through and 
click on next. Now from here, you wanna be going through, remember how we said at the start of the video, you've got those ad groups. Now for this one, because we're targeting our one bedroom Seminyak Villas, we wanna be targeting this URL, not our two bedroom villa page. So you can type it in from here. And once again, you wanna change this name. We're just gonna call it 1BV. That's just an internal name that we know that this is our one bedroom villa Bali ad group. Now you can get keyword suggestions. And if you were to select that, you can see that Google gives you a whole heap of selections. Now I would also recommend completing your keyword research before you get to start your campaign. And what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll give you a link of another training that I've released on YouTube of how to complete your keyword research. But for this one, we're just gonna add in three different keywords. And we've just got here one bedroom villa Seminyak, one bedroom villa Bali, and one bedroom Seminyak pool villas. And then from there, it comes down to when we're gonna to start to selecting our ads. So what we wanna do, we wanna put in our URL. Once again, you wanna make sure that it is highly targeted to your search terms. As I said, we're selecting this one bedroom villa page because it takes them straight to that one bedroom villa booking page as opposed to the two bedroom villa. And then from here, this is the display path. Now, what's important to note here is that this isn't the actual URL, so you can see in here it says one bedroom villa Seminyak, but we can just write in here one bedroom and you can see it displays it in here. Now you've got 15 characters. And the reason for why I like this one is it just gives you a little bit more context. And now from here, you've got an option of adding in 15 different headlines and also four different descriptions. Even though you can add in 15 different headlines, it will only show a maximum of three headlines and a maximum of two descriptions. So this is what's called responsive search ads. So I'm gonna go through and add in about 10 headlines and some different descriptions. And what I'll also do is in the link below, I'll give you some extended training on how to split test and set up responsive search ads properly. Just go through to the description below and you can see that information down there. If you wanted to as well, Google will give you some recommendations. So just for the time being today, we're just gonna add in these recommendations. But as I said, for me, I will give you some specific training. And the reason for that is because these headlines should also include not only a keyword focus, but I'm also a really big believer in making sure that your headlines have emotional triggers and also they have very clear call to action. So a call to action would be something like a, a direct booking guarantee or you know book direct and save. There are some options of a really clear call to action or if you've got a sale on, we could say 40% sale on now. And once again, that's just gonna give us some really clear call to actions. And what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to entice people to click on your ad. And now as you can see from here, it's rotating through the different headlines. So that's what we said. You can put up to 15 different headlines, but Google will only show three at a time. And then once that's set up, you then go through and click next. Also too, what you can do is you can also go through and set up different ad groups and different ads, but you can do that at a later date. When it comes to budget, Google will give you some recommended budgets, but if you wanted to, you can set a custom budget. We wanna set $10 a day. Now it is important to note that the way that Google calculates this is that it gives you a recommendation of $10 a day. So Google's saying it can spend $70 a week or $300 a month. Now that doesn't mean that you'll spend $10 every single day. There may be some days where you spend up to $15, and then other days you may spend $5. Then once you've got that, you go through and click next. And this is where Google then goes through and checks for errors. And then it comes through to where you can review your campaign. Now, there are some different scores in here. As I said, this is just a guide from Google. I need to go through and add in some extra headlines and extra descriptions, and that would automatically pop up, increase this campaign optimization score. And then once that's completed and ready, you just need to go through and click on the publish button. And congratulations, you have now set up your Google Ads search campaign campaign because you've gone through and clicked on that publish button. Now, I also wanna just let you know that especially if this is a new Google Ads account, it may take up to three to seven days for your ads to start showing. So don't be alarmed that if you go through and click publish and you don't see any clicks or impressions, especially for those first three days, because Google does need to go through and run through some different checks before it can start your campaign. Now remember, if you did miss any of those steps to follow that link in the description below so that you can get my Google Ads campaign setup guide, which has been updated for this new Google Ads dashboard. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And now that you have your Google Ads campaign set up, the next important step is that you need to know how to optimize your Google Ads campaigns, especially your Google Ads search campaigns. And to help you with that, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thank you again for joining me. See you next time.